Thank you, Emerson and Da Vinci Junior High School communities for joining us in our virtual community outreach meeting for the new science building to be constructed on the Emerson Da Vinci High, Junior High School campus. My name is Matt Best, and I'm the Deputy Superintendent of the Davis Joint Unified School District, and I'll be your host for this virtual outreach meeting. Joining me is Marcus Hibser, Principal from HY Architects here in Davis. Our purpose for holding this meeting is to bring you all up to speed on the work that's taking place thus far on this project. We'll also be outlining the DGUSD bond program, defining the DGUSD facilities process, sharing with you key aspects of this facility, final building placement, and giving you an opportunity to provide additional feedback over the course of the coming days. First off, I want to provide a huge thank you to the voters of Davis for the pas passage of Measure M, which will allow us to build this beautiful building and many others like it throughout the district. The district has sold all of the $150 million worth of bonds related to the passage of Measure M. And in related and excited news, the district was able to secure an, an excellent financing rate for these bonds saving the Davis taxpayers more than $79 million in interest over the term of the bonds from what we had initially projected at the time of the election. In addition to the Measure M bond funds, the district has compiled additional funds to be used on bond program projects in the sum of $75 million. This bond project is by far the largest construction project the district has seen in many, many years. And we're excited to bring these much needed improvements to our students and school communities. We expect this project to be completed in the spring of 2021. The planning for the new science lab and restroom project at Emerson and Da Vinci Junior High Schools began in February of 2019 with Emerson and Da Vinci High, Junior High School staff who helped us to refine the educational program that these buildings would, would serve we held two community meetings in the fall of 2019, and the Board of Education approved the final schematic design for this project in September 2020. Each project in our bond program has similar project phases. The first phase is the programming and schematic design phase. In this phase, we work to determine what the building will be used for and ensure that the spaces within that building can meet the need. In this case, the, progr the programming and schematic design work has been completed. Once the building location is finalized, which it has been in this case, the project moves into design development. During this phase, specific construction details are finalized, including paint colors, faucet types, etc. And we're having our final community outreach meeting as we are completed with the design development portion of this project. Once the design development phase is complete, our architects cr create construction documents, which must be approved by the Division of State Architect. The Division of State Architect approves all plans for public school construction in California. This DSA process will likely take several months, and once the drawings are approved, we will hire a contractor to build the building. The construction phase for this project will take several months. Now, I would like to hand over the presentation to our lead designer and principal of HY Architects, Marcus Hipser. Thank you so much, Matt. Appreciate it. I'm really excited about this project. Um, I think that uh, it's a really tremendous opportunity to add um, some, some flexibility and usability to the science program on the campus, and I think it's really great placement. Um, it really offers a great opportunity for the Da Vinci and Emerson schools to share as well as collaborate and but also have their own unique spaces. So um, talk a little bit about the, the buildings. Here are the light gray buildings or are the, are the new buildings and uh, wh what is in those buildings is, uh, go ahead, the, um, uh, we're looking at four new complete science labs. Uh, each of them have uh, eight dedicated lab stations and will be outfitted with flexible furniture so they can uh, focus on uh, not only small group instruction, but lectures and lab experiments. Uh, each pod of buildings, so there's two buildings, each with two classrooms, 
has a dedicated prep room. Right now, the staff are very low on prep space, and this provides them an opportunity to have a lot more, a lot more flexibility in terms of the types of experiments they can do and the types of science that they can teach in these rooms, with all with this room to be able to store those uh, experiments and the uh, materials that go along with it. Um, student and staff restrooms is a common problem at every school, and we were able to add some to this um, uh, campus with the addition to this project. And ultimately, two of these labs are going to be assigned to Emerson Junior High, and two are going to be assigned to the Da Vinci Junior High School. Um, but as I said, they're going to be able to collaborate in a science courtyard, which I can talk to you about um, when we go to the next slide. Oh, I, I'm sorry, before I get to that, uh, one of the unique things about this project is the uh, use of a modular construction method of project delivery. So American Modular Systems has a building called the Gen 7. It's a very sustainable type of building. Uh, it's not perfect for every project, but for science labs and matching the architecture of the existing campus, it makes for a very good building. Uh, there are a couple of examples of what these buildings are gonna look like here up on the screen. Um, a couple of advantages to modular construction, it, it, it enables us to keep the cost a little bit lower than your standard construction cost, which helps us go farther and build more than we otherwise would uh, be able to. Also, the speed of construction. You'll notice that uh, we talked about construction being about six months, somewhere between four and six months. And uh, the only reason we can do it so quickly is because they're building the building in a plant while they're doing the work on the site, then they can come to deliver the building when you finish it. It actually uh, helps them build more of this work in parallel than they otherwise would be able to. So the next slide will show us uh, exactly how this campus lays out and the connection. You can see the existing science labs uh, in the center of the, uh, one of these pods in the existing building. Our new buildings are the beige color here and in between those is a courtyard. Uh, it enables them to, uh, the science teachers to be able to do experiments inside the classroom, but also to bring that outside. They can do display out there, they can do experiments outside. Um, and the connection into the building and to the existing science labs is pretty direct, which makes this a really great addition to the campus, but also maintains that, um, that, that, that collaboration that the science teachers really need uh, when they're talking about curriculum and uh, sharing resources and that sort of thing. So in the next slide, we're gonna look inside the classrooms a little bit more. So as you can see, we talked about four science labs and this, and this courtyard in between. Um, science labs one, two, three, and four, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, with the uh, restrooms there on the uh, northern part of the first building there. So they are more accessible to the remainder of the campus. There's a lot of activity there, but you can also see the direct connection from the um, science labs out to the courtyard and then from the courtyard all the way into the existing building. So if we go to the next slide, I can talk to you a little bit about what goes into this. And the reason I wanted to show you this and why there's so many labels on here is just because of the amount of effort that we went into with the teachers to talk about what would go into these classrooms. We really wanted these to be um, available to any type of curriculum that they might come up with. We really wanted to set this school up, these schools rather, up for the next generation science standards and any, any type of project, any type of experiment that might come their way. So uh, we worked very closely with the staff to develop a very comprehensive list of the equipment that goes in the prep room. We worked a long time on how this prep room was laid out and ultimately we ended up with two and they're identical. And you can see that inside the prep room there's a fume hood, there's a, um, emergency wash, there's refrigerators for um, reagents, there's a, a prep area, there's a hazard cabinet for um, materials that uh, are potentially corrosive. There's a ton of storage, stuff that they don't, aren't current, don't currently have. And then uh, a dishwasher to help them wash up for experiments. On the outside in the classroom space, the, uh, the teacher prep area and the teacher teaching area is mobile. So they can move that around the room so they can reorient that room any way that they like which makes a big difference because uh, we're looking at small group instruction and moving students around and being in different groups. And it allows a lot more flexibility in the classroom than they currently have in their existing lab. The, um, as I ta talked about flexibility, the work student, the, the, sorry, the student tables are also mobile. Um, they will attach to the uh, countertops, but they can also be moved around the room so they can be set up for a lecture, they can be set up for labs, they can be adjacent to the counters. And then, of course, you can see around the room the number of sinks that are in the, um, in the classroom as well as 
the gas turrets for uh, chemistry experiments should they have the desire. So that gets us into the detail of what's in the classroom. I think it's very exciting. The teachers are very excited and we're really happy to be able to provide this for the school district. So back to you, Matt. Thanks, Marcus, appreciate that. We hope that you'll continue to stay informed and engaged on this project. You can find a great deal of information about all of the bond projects in the district, including key aspects of, and project milestones and frequently asked questions on our district website at www.djusd.net slash bond. You can also subscribe to our monthly bond newsletter and get updates each month by visiting the website. We'd love to hear your thoughts about this building and you can send feedback to facility planning at djusd.net with any comments. All of your comments will be shared with our bond team working on this project. For this meeting, the comment period will end on July 26, 2020. Thank you for watching and we hope that you and your family are well.